the neighbor's like, what is that crazy guy Jean doing again? Well, what I'm up to, what I'm thinking about today on this nice sort of non-sunny day is this. Fujifilm X-Pro3. Four things, basically. I've, uh, I've been watching it on kakaku.com, which is like buy.com, so you see in real time the market fluctuations for, I don't know, dozens, if not hundreds of shops. Um, that, that would include, whoa, whoa, wrong way, ha, there we are. That would include things like Amazon, and include those big ones that you always see referenced on uh, Fuji Rumors, uh, like, uh, <laughs> what's it called? It's a big blue one, Softmap and all that. Well, it turns out that the camera in the last couple of weeks has basically nosedived in its um, sales price. So it went from like, Niju, it was like Niju Ichiman, something like that, which was like 2,100 bucks. I think tax included, I'm not sure. Um, and it's now gone down to like Juhachi Kyusen, so like 1800 bucks. I've been told by Fuji Rumors that this camera is like the best selling camera in December. Maybe, could be, but I don't think that that's the case anymore. Maybe it is. But it, it usually when you don't drop the price a lot on something that's selling really, really good, do you? Hey, 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 doggo. I don't know. I kind of hope that it's selling well. And there's a whole bunch of reasons behind this that I might get into another video. Today, all I want to talk about is this. Well, three other things. There's a couple of defects that are coming up on this thing. And uh, a lot of Fujifilm fans are like, you know, this happens all the time. You know, Leica's got lots of defects. And they do. Leica have had a lot of defects in the past. But they haven't had defects like so it's happening with the Fujifilm right now. It seems like every time Fujifilm have some sort of defect, it's often poor, poor, poor design. And I don't mean like there's something that happened on the production line. What I mean is it's back, it's actually from, from the, the design board before they even do anything. They're like, we'll do it this way. And it turns out that it's a bad design and I don't know why they don't catch it. The big defect that everyone's talking about at Deep Preview and Fuji Rumors right now is that the EVF for some reason gets super duper bright. Um, and it's not a backlight problem, obviously, because this thing's a organic lead or whatever it's called, they're called OLED. So, uh, it's not that. Don't know what's going on. Hopefully they can fix that with the firmware or maybe not. Maybe you got to send your camera back and I hope it's not a lot of people. Fuji Rumors and Fuji Film themselves said that it's not a lot of people affected. When I was at Yorobashi the other day, um, checking out the X-Pro3 for the first time, pretty, pretty cool camera. What I noticed was the display model seemed to be okay, at least the one I touched. However, there were two display models and it looks like the other one had that problem because there was a gentleman who was a customer was showing off that problem to the Fujifilm representative there. And the Fujifilm representative was kind of upset, maybe panicking or whatever, I don't know. Like, you shouldn't have this on a display model. But I noticed the next problem, and that is that the titanium faceplate that's like right below right next to, or just basically meeting sort of the, that rubber or that fake leather um, skin underneath that underneath OVF and just kind of in the top plate well that thing had separated so I could put my nail under it I don't think I could put a coin under it, but it was pretty thick that I could put some sort of spatula under it easily and that thing well it was on the display model one the EVF problem was on the dis another display model evidently and right now at the Facebook part of the, the Fujifilm fans of the X-Pros Unfortunately, that's really hitting home hard. Lots of people are showing pictures of, of that thing separating. And you know what? It's not a manufacturing problem. That is a design problem. The basic reason is this. That l thin layer of titanium doesn't have any sort of catch. There's no bevel. Titanium is a very soft, even if you have it in alloy, it's a, it's a soft, malleable, and, and wonderfully springy and elastic -y metal. I mean, it's, it's one reason why it's pretty good to have on bicycles. Um, well, that thing is too thin, and because it's not brittle, the metal doesn't keep itself into shape by itself. So, the metal's bowing out, or bowing out, however you say it, and uh, yeah, people have got pictures of spatulas and like the ends of chopsticks and fingernails and paper and everything going right underneath it. How could Fujifilm address this if it's an actual design problem? 
Well, they're gonna have to redesign that top plate. They're not just gonna be able to bend it back in place or put some glue under it. If they put some glue under it, eventually it's just gonna come back out again. If, however, they're able to be honest and say this is an actual design and not manufacturing problem, and it's not gonna just affect a few cameras, it's gonna affect all of them eventually. Well, what they gotta do is they gotta have a recall. Recall all of them, change something, add a bevel. One thing I really like about the X-Pro 3 is it doesn't have that bevel. The X-Pro 2 looked like, like, so why you got the bevel there? Especially it's aluminum, you don't need one. But it was kind of like, it was a flourish for the sake of having a flourish. It was so anti-Bauhaus. As a Leica user, it was one thing that I, I really didn't like about it because it was just unnecessary. You know, Leica and M take out the unnecessary stuff and they give you what they figure is the most simple and most distilled camera to perfection. Fujifilm was a Japanese company. That's not really sort of what Japanese companies do. They, they like to add weird stylistic flourishes on a lot of things. So you look at a Japanese sports car, it looks like a fish. You look at a German sports car, it looks like a really well thought out, slightly upscale um, sedan, you know? Maybe it's just got two doors, but it's like one is extreme and one is rather mature. So what I really liked about the X-Pro3 is it was flat, it was flush, it was more Bauhaus, it was, it was more just no nonsense. It was more German. I liked that. But it's not going to work in titanium. It's got to be done in aluminium or, or brass or something like that that's harder, tougher. Not tougher, but harder and doesn't bend because the titanium is going to bend out again. So they're going to have to either add a bevel or they're going to have to add some sort of catch or something like that because that's going to happen eventually to every single X-Pro3. Now, there's not really... How many problems did I say there were? There are two other problems that I noticed. They're not big. Like one, some guy's leather's peeling off already. That happens to most cameras eventually, but it seems to be, at least for the X-Pro3, that these problems are coming fast and hard. Now, is this one going to be repeatable? I don't know. The leather thing, it could be that maybe his hands have got a lot of oil on them. It could be he uses some weird lotion. It could be that that camera, just, just that camera alone, wasn't that well sealed. That, that happens, you know? So that could just be a, a one-off defect. But the viewfinder, one of the things that's just very obvious is the viewfinder and the technology around the viewfinder, the titanium plate and all that, is just something's wrong with it. Another guy in Japan has shown that there is some dust underneath the screen. And it's pretty obvious if this camera is supposed to be weather sealed. And if that titanium plate is involved in the weather in the weather seal at all, there's going to be ingress of dust, moisture, and other things that are going to get into things like the EVF or the OVF or whatever it's called. And that is again down to bad design. You can't fix by just saying, okay, this was a single one-off on this production run. Fujifilm users, even myself included, to a certain degree. I mean, my Fujifilm cameras have been plagued by a number of hardware issues. My X-T3 has a, a wobbly shutter speed on-off button, goes up and down and up and down and rocks on its post. My X-H1 had the same problem. Uh, my X-T1, the card door was looked like someone just took an X-Acto knife and just cut it into place <laughs> with like a melty edge. It was horrible. And it had a light leak. My X-Pro1, however, I don't think the camera was well, it wasn't a perfect camera, but that thing, the metal and everything was just solid. There were, you know, it wasn't, wasn't weather sealed. It, you know, it didn't have the best base plate as you saw in my, may have seen in my uh, Omni Maj article where basically the, the base plate was curling up if you used a tripod plate. Um, so it wasn't perfect, but that thing seems to have weathered the storm. Loads of people have those cameras and they're just in good shape. Some people also suggested that X-Pro1 is in better shape or better made than X-Pro2 and I think that that may be the case. Of course, it doesn't have weather season and all that. But at this moment, I just don't know what to think. The camera market is shrinking. Back when the X-Pro1 like, came out, it was like the upward trend of mirrorless and all that. And the camera market is shrinking and you can't afford in this moment to release cameras that aren't as well made. And I really, really hope that Fujifilm are able to fix this because the X-Pro3 is a Halo product in a way. 
It's not a product that everyone's going to want to buy because it's, it looks like an older film camera. It's got that weird LCD thing. It's not going to appeal to the masses, but it's a camera that says something about your company, especially as your company does something different. And the X-Pro1 is definitely different on the market. No, it's not a Leica M. And yes, it does sort of intend to try to be one, but it's got to do something, got to say something better about your company than a company that literally puts out designs that from the pen, from the very first stroke of the design process, were poorly concepted. Conceived. Conceived. That's a word. Concept is a is an idea. Conceived is a verb. Conceived. Conceived. So, Fujifilm, look, we're all fans. Some of us are fanboys, some of us are just users of your stuff. It'd be really nice if you fixed this problem. Because, gee whiz, honestly, that thing shouldn't happen. That sort of really weak, thin, bowed out piece of metal should not happen. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this silly little video is enough to get a little thumbs up or something like that, or at least a comment. And if you didn't like it, leave two thumbs down, how Gerald uh, Undone tells to do it. You will have noticed that I got a new hat. It's black. It's got like the FL for Fotaku Lounge. If you want to buy the hat, 20 bucks, that's shipped as well. So it's like 10 bucks for the amazing drawing and the serial number and all that. The next thing you could do is go to my Patreon. You could do two bucks or four bucks support. Helps me rent stuff, helps me <laughs> be motivated. Just It'd just be nice to do it, you know? Uh, and I do, what I do is give back by giving you photographs I took for reviews. So every you know review video I have, uh, then I'll have two photographs. If you did the, the two, two support, uh, then you get it 1080p. If you did it for support, then you get it at uh, 4K. Or if you did composite support, you get the composite image that I took for the review. It supports me. Hopefully it gives you some cool stuff to look at. That's it. Thank you guys very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.